I want to get to that breaking news. News Nation just learning that President Biden called Paul Whelan's family to tell them the U.S. is committed to bringing Paul home as soon as possible. Now, of course, you'll remember Paul Whelan was detained by Russian police in late 2018 and convicted on espionage charges. Just yesterday, Whelan's brother David was here on Rush Hour and said his family had not heard from President Biden. When the U.S. government announcing today they will now be in regular contact with Paul's family as well as Brittany Griner's family to provide regular updates on the efforts to get their loved ones home. Let's hear what David Whelan had to say yesterday. The Russians have pitched uh, freeing two particular Russians from the very first day that Paul was arrested. That was the message that the uh, Russian State Security Service gave to Paul uh, back in January 2018 or 2019. So we've known that that was what they wanted. And unfortunately for Paul, one of those people was traded for, uh, for Trevor Reed. So it's great to have Trevor home, but it means that there are that many few options if that's all that the U.S. government is going to consider. And I think that that really highlights the problem. They need to consider more things. All right, now, so now we want to get to our panel and bring in our panelists. Is the U.S. doing enough panel to, to bring Americans being held by foreign governments like Paul Whelan, like Brittany Griner? Are they doing enough to bring them home? Let's start with you, Dr. Laura. You know, unfortunately, I don't think they are doing enough, especially when we consider Paul Whelan, a former U.S. Marine who has risked his life for our country, and the thought of him being in that labor camp uh, for three years there in Russia, in that labor camp, excuse me, I think it's egregious uh, that we haven't done more, that the U.S. hasn't done more to get him home. And the fact that it takes public pressure, it takes that for them to do what they should do, meaning our U.S. administration, to get our family members home. As far as Brittany Griner as well. That is an extreme sentence that she is potentially facing 10 years um, for what seems to be um, a very minor infraction. She did break the law allegedly based on uh, what I'm seeing, but I still think that we're not doing enough to get our people home. Again, especially our people that have served in the military. I think it's just astonishing. Yeah, you know, when you look at this, you realize that there are costs to um, putting forth an image of political weakness on the world stage. And I, I have to say, I think that's what we're seeing here. Um, certainly the previous administration, whatever your views on them, uh, was much more effective in bringing home these kind of people who had been detained, who had been imprisoned in foreign nations. Um, so whatever you thought of the Trump administration, they were very effective at, at that. We saw, for example, the uh, ASAP Rocky case who was detained in Sweden. And so I think what we're really seeing here is a bit of fecklessness and it seems disjointed, it seems um, disorganized, and there doesn't seem to be a real effort to protect America's image, project a position of strength on the world stage. And I think that's probably the, well, it's certainly concerning for these families, but there's also the concerning um, element of this is what does this tell our allies? What does this tell the rest of the world about what America's position is right now when we don't make these efforts? Well, you know, and panel, I just yeah, want to step in here really quick, Jason, uh, before we can continue the conversation, because I want, I want to make sure that we also bring in the Brittany Griner um, the portion of this as well. I know just in the last hour, uh, the, the WNBA, uh, her wife, Brittany Griner's wife, Reverend Al Sharpton, and WNBA players, they all held a press conference. It was here in Chicago. They're urging mercy and leniency for Griner. And, of course, we know that she pleaded guilty yesterday to drug charges. She now does, as Dr. Laura said, face up to 10 years in a Russian prison. Now, Brittany's wife, Sherelle Griner, spoke about the letter that Griner and Biden wrote to each other. Let's listen. So I'm grateful and I'm thankful that the administration that was the first one that BG ever voted for took the time to see her as a person, to see her in the midst of what she's going through, and to speak to me directly and let me know that they are exhausting all efforts to bring her home. But, you know, Jason, I want to throw it to you. I know you were about to say something. I mean, is, is this enough? 
no, you shouldn't have to go on TV to get a response from an administration that supposedly cares about Americans who are effectively being held as political captives by Russia. It, it is so ludicrous. Now, I certainly understand that this is not an easy situation, but if they handled this correctly from the start behind the scenes, you wouldn't get an interview with the family complaining about how they're being completely ignored. Greiner is absolutely a victim in this, and I agree with Megan. I mean, this is just feckless leadership coming from the Biden administration. At the same time, we are backing Ukraine, obviously, in the war with Russia. So a, a lot of this is going to be well beyond what this administration or even the Trump administration would be able to handle while staying on the side of Ukraine. Now, Russia has an opportunity here. Putin is not a nice person. However, from an optic standpoint, if he relented on this, he could probably win a little bit of goodwill in a situation where pretty much everyone loathes him. Now, is that going to go a long way? Does he really care? No. But unfortunately, it seems like at this point, we have to rely, unfortunately, on a monster like Vladimir Putin. And Dina, I want to give you an opportunity to weigh in, too. I mean, I think you can't discount the fact that she was arrested in the beginning of the war with Ukraine, and it was clearly about that and not the, what she did or didn't bring into the country. I mean, she was actually going there to play for a Russian team. Normally, that would be somebody they would want to support Russia. The fact that they arrested her was a sign, and there's really only so much any president can do. A country has sovereignty over their laws, over anybody who breaks a law in their country and serves prison time, really what they do are prison swaps. And Russia's willing to do a prison swap, but the one they want released is this arms dealer who's called the merchant of death. You know, this is why they, the administration wants to couple her release with Paul Whelan to make it maybe a little bit easier to swallow to have this prison swap. But there's really not that much anyone can do to force a country to release somebody they think has broken the law in their country. You know, it, it, I we, think the issue. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I think the issue, though, is that you're hearing from both the Whelan family and from Brittany Brainerd's wife saying that, look, we've had to go to extraordinary lengths to get the administration's attention. They have repeatedly said we have not spoken to the president. So there is a sense here in which the administration is being caught flat footed in the press cycle here in by the families. And that I think requires some explanation. I want to know why, why weren't you on top of this? Why weren't you speaking to these families? Why are they having to get in front of cameras yeah. and say, we haven't talked to the president? Well, that, that was Does actually what I wanted to say. Believe that this president is, is working as hard as he can on this and prior to him speaking out was working as hard as he can. We get that every time, the baby formula shortage. Oh, we've been working 24 seven on, no you weren't. And you clearly, he clearly was not working on this either. And, and I will say, though, you know, David Whelan yesterday when he spoke to us, he, he did say that, you know, the family had not up until today heard from President Biden. But he also said that he did not blame the president, saying that he knew that the president had so many other issues that he was also dealing with. So he did give that diplomatic answer when I when I asked him that question. But, OK, panel, we're going to move on. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.